very important film, and I don't think that this film, Sorry for the Pun, could have come out years ago and have the same effect that it's having today. That being said, now that you guys are on this press tour, what are some of the reactions and some of the feedback that you have been receiving? I'll start. Uh, um, I think one of the things that's been tremendous about it has been the uniformity of the of the enthusiastic response at the end of this sort of happy ending of this romantic comedy that like you know all walks of life all people and all different red states and blue states and wherever we've gone with the with the film uh, to see the audience reaction particularly to the happy ending uh, you know I think uh, has been um, really rewarding for me personally not even just as a director but just as a gay person to see uh, audiences of all kinds you know applauding a gay kiss uh, is really powerful. And, uh, and something that I'm not sure I ever expected to see in a, in a film like this. How about you, Natasha? Um, I, I agree. <laughs> I mean, I think that the why now of it, or the, the it's a, just a magical, powerful film that resonates with people because it's a story about being authentic and trying to um, allow the version of yourself that is yours and what you show and how you bridge the two and how you, how do you live your life more authentically and I think that's why uh, we need it right now especially in this climate that authenticity is being celebrated and people are being drawn to it. Speaking of authenticity, I think that it's really important on social media to be authentic and just in general when you're growing a brand or a business and something that Beyonce does is that she wants holds authenticity to be like that is her truth. But we're also talking about social media and online, and that's a huge element in this film. Can we talk about online and social media presence today and how it affects teens in high school? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's, uh, it's very topical. Um, I think it causes a, a lot of uh, anxiety to teens these days, because there's a, a certain kind of permanency now to what you say. Um, like if you post something on Twitter or post anything on Instagram, that is now representing you for kind of all eternity, even if it's you know deleted, get it back. And so I think that people, um, teens especially, it's already a difficult time. It's a transitional period in your life, and they're being just forced to be hyper self-aware and hyper um, self-critical at times. Um, and I think it's a uh, it's not always a good thing. I think in a lot of ways it's, it can be very positive in the way that it connects people and the way that you can find communities um, that you might not otherwise have access to. Uh, I think you know, in certain parts of the country the message of this film um, is that you can find people like you. You know, It's, it's not just people that you're around. You can, there's, there's a community for you. So, um, yeah, I don't, it's, a, it's, a, it's sort of a complicated uh, issue, double-edged sword. It's good and bad. Mm -hmm. I think people are, are figuring out how to, we're all still, the world is still figuring out how to navigate social media and I think what people are starting to notice is that we latch on to people when they're authentic and so then kids are like, well maybe I should be authentic too, like maybe we don't have to constantly paint ourselves and as these different specific pictures online. Of course that's still going to exist, it still does, maybe for the majority, but like more and more and more we're being able to be inspired by people, um, not just showing the highlights, but expressing when they have anxiety or expressing like their their truths. And I think that that's it, that's an exciting thing for where social media can go because those those posts, like when someone's like being honest, those don't give you anxiety because they they don't make you like compare yourself to them. They they make you sort of go, oh, it's okay. But there are so many posts that we're used to seeing that do cause that like. Oh, am I not enough? Am I not doing? So it's like, yeah, it is that double? Yeah. So. I mean, for me, I don't like posting too much. Like, I'm young. My, like my you friends. Mysterious. <laughs> I'm serious. <I'm laughs> <serious. laughs> Give them a reason to hit you up and hang out, I right? No, but right? the thing is, like, I don't. Keep them guessing. Yeah, I know. You know. I'm doing my thing. You know, um, I, uh, I, I don't like posting too much personally, just because it's it's weird. It makes me feel. I feel like I have to think about it so much. So even though it's like mysterious that I don't post, it's not like it's that's so intentional. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just yeah, it it scared me just because it's weird to put all of yourself out there. I know it's funny like, as an actor to, to be scared to put yourself out there, but you're putting out like your your, your true self, you know.
Yeah. And that's okay. I get <laughs> that. I'll spend like 30 minutes on a caption on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Alexandra, I feel like you, you feel the same way. Oh, 100%. I feel like either I have to um, share this huge in-depth story and make a, make a post something that is super catered to who I am and to not feel like it's just another post on a timeline. And yet, at the same time, I think that there's something to be said about posts that literally have no no tag, no line in it. It's just a picture, you know, and you can and you can take away from it. But also, it's like when you're dealing with social media, and I think that you get a chance to see that in, in Love, Simon, is that there are positive aspects to it where you can find that community, like Nick is saying. And then there's ways to be completely and utterly cyberbullied and shamed, like what happened to the Martin character. Um, and that's super detrimental. I mean, people are taking their own lives because of stuff like this. And, and it's, it's pertinent that we not only celebrate the people who share themselves, but take it upon ourselves to not shame people through social media, to not come for them through social media. You know, we all fall into that every now and then where it's drama, but at the, re the, at the heart of it, we just want to have love in this world, and I think that we're trying to start that with this movie. Mm -hmm. I think that... None, I mean, it's so... No, I mean, it's, 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 it's a scary thing to, to do, to not know yourself and then try to present yourself to so many different people from so many different walks of life. Yeah. Everyone's trying to find themselves, and, and then everyone's being judged because it's such a critical time where at least you make it up to be. Mm -hmm. You feel that everyone is. Is, is in your business and, and maybe it's just them trying to reach out but there's, there's just like a, a miscommunication going on at that stage when you're 15, 16, 17 where, where you, you just can't be yourself yet. You, you, you were born like yesterday. You can't, you can't know your, your whole you at, during high school. So, so just uh, I guess be patient. Um, recently you shared that three days before you received this script, mm -hmm. someone close to you actually came out to you. Mm -hmm. What was his or her reaction when he or she found out you were doing this project? She was like, she was not happy. But not, not in that way. It's, it's because it, is, it was going to come out on her birthday. She was like, why are you going to do your thing? <laughs> why are you doing my thing on my birthday? You're thinking about you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing this for you. Yeah, I'm like, no, it's for you. Like, you no. stole her gay thunder. I stole her <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. She probably is but cool with it. did this film inspire her? Has she come out since? Uh, to to more and more people ever since. But I, I'm sure. I mean, the thing is, I'm doing it for her. So if, if it hasn't come out yet, so when she sees it, I'll really know. Mm -hmm. Like I hope, like I'll have a real person that I really care about and I can check in with and know how they feel to really gauge. Because at the end of the day, people can talk about how much it changes them, but it actually affects me in my life personally. And that's, at the end of the day, we all care about everything, but there's a selfish desire to want what you want, and I want what's best for like, my friends. Greg, we actually spoke earlier. Greg had a very similar experience to Simon in the film. He was closeted in high school, and I asked him earlier, if he could go back to his high school self after doing this film, what would he tell his high school self? And he said, hmm. Um, I, I mean, I would say uh, to hang in there, and that uh, you're, you're the best version of your life will begin once you find the courage to sort of speak, say who you are, uh, and that uh, and to not hold it against yourself for being uh, ashamed or afraid. Uh, that those are all normal feelings, and and uh, but to once you start speaking up, you'll find you'll find allies. I just walked in here today, and my my college drama teacher is here. <laughs> <laughs> There was a, uh, you know, he he knew I was gay before I was ready to say it, and uh, was really wonderful about creating an atmosphere for me uh, when I wasn't ready to uh, to come out. Uh, but to, you know, I just think to let me know that I was still loved and cared for, and, and really made that known to me. And I remember very pivotal conversations that we've talked about since. So I love that you're here today. That's amazing. And before I open up. Uh, to the room, I do want to ask Catherine, because of course, I'm sure many of us have seen 13 Reasons Why. 
So the topic of bullying in school is not something new to you. You actually came onto this project right after 13 Reasons Why. What was the difference from shooting a Netflix series like that and shooting a feature film like this? Um, it's a really good question. I mean, because for me, uh, this script came to me even before we had finished wrapping season one of 13 Reasons Why. And in, in many ways, it was unlikely. You know, I was in, in very deep into this intense, prolific character. And then I read this, which is so full of joy. but. Also similar in, a, in the in the sense that I feel it it portrays a story um, with a real aim for authenticity and and reality and truth and I think that's something that really um, drew me towards it. I just forgot your question. I had it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Filming the Netflix oh, series from, right, within right. a high school world yeah. and then also this feature film with Fox. Got it. Yeah. No. And I think what I was going to go on to say was you know they were both. Uh, very different experiences, um, but both my first experiences at two things, like 13 was my first job, my first TV series, and this was my first film. Um, and I think that they were both fantastic experiences, but what I really, I think, enjoyed and took away from, from my experience on Love, Simon was just the love and the dedication and being involved in something and be lu being lucky enough to be involved in something where you really felt that everyone was in this for the right reasons. Um, Greg Berlanti, I think, was the perfect director to, to direct this film. Not only does he understand it, but he had so much commitment and, and passion and generosity, not just as a director, but as a human being, that really, I think, influenced for the better the crew, the cast, and everyone around him. And it really made for, for a great environment on set and, and what I think is a really great film and story. Awesome. All right. Questions? Hi, um, I was just wondering, I love this movie, I thought it was so fantastic. There's so many moments where you're either laughing or you're crying. I'm wondering for all of you if you knew you had the right take, if you made the crew laugh or cry or say, today I'm going to make this group cry <laughs> or <laughs> laugh. Um, I don't know the way I ever set out to make a group cry. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say, uh, this the, the one scene where I felt like we had I mean, it's, I don't know if I, I, I hesitate to say where we nailed it, but where we felt like we had made some, where we were in the right ballpark was uh, the scene between Simon and his mom. Uh, I think that was a very emotional day for everybody. I think people weren't actually expecting the kind of emotion that happened. Um, our producers were crying, there were grips that were crying, it was like the, everyone was having, uh, everyone was sort of hearing these words and just they had a reaction to it. And I think it kind of speaks to the fact that whether you're gay or straight or whatever, uh, hearing word, hearing that, that speech of like, you are worthy and you deserve love and you can exhale, I mean, all those things are so powerful and uh, it really makes for a great movie going experience. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you all enjoy the film. <laughs> so do you guys cry when you see the film because yeah, you already yes. know what's going to happen? I definitely cry. Yes. <laughs> I cry at many different moments. The more and more I see this movie, the more and more I'm like, I know what's going to happen! What is wrong with me? <laughs> I cry during interviews talking about the film. So. <laughs> for four years, and so it's a Venn diagram of Ms. Albright and the life I lived. <laughs> um, so I pulled from all of those experiences to sort of find her, but to Greg's credit, like, he really allowed me to play on set and have fun to really sort of find her voice and, and the way she moved and how she felt, but um, yeah, it, it, was, it was a combination of all that. Did you ever pull a student off a table and put him in his place? I pulled many a student off of uh, many a place. <laughs> um, but all out of love. I think like the thing that I love about this character and the role is that the theater in high school for me and even as a teacher is a home for people who felt like they were on the outside and it was a safe space and it was 
important to me as a teacher to fiercely protect it as a safe space. And so I totally felt, Miss Albright, when someone attacks your brood, you become very defensive. And um, I felt that resonated with me when in playing her, uh, understanding that need to protect and to be not just an ally in theory, but what does an active ally look like? Um, so it was really fun to play her and to really put some kids in their place. <laughs> yeah. Did you take the role of a teacher over the kids on set? No, not at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hi, uh, this message is for Greg, or uh, question is for Greg. Um, so you are a fan of the DC Universe, mm -hmm. and I was just wondering um, what, if you could, with the exception of Keenan, if you could put them in, in your TV shows, what would they be? Oh, who would they play in the DC Universe? Yeah. That's a great question. No one's ever asked me that. <laughs> I, know, I know what answer I want. <laughs> Oh my! I need to think about that. that <laughs> my, uh, 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 um, uh, I think next, Jimmy Olsen. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I know you're expecting me to give you a superpower. <laughs> All right, just. Average. But yeah, but it's, uh, it's, got, it's got that sweet wholesomeness that Jimmy Olsen always uh, always had. Um, I, I, Alex is already in the Marvel Universe, yeah. so I think I'll get in trouble if I... It's just Fox, honey. It's <laughs> like the Fox. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. So, so that's like, such a challenging question. It's mine. Just give Nick uh, uh, George's. Yeah. John Stewart. You'll be John Stewart. Who's that? <laughs> he's, he's, he's a Green Lantern. Ew! Okay. <laughs> what Green Buddy. Buddy. What I was going to say Buddy. Beast Boy. Oh, okay. Uh, I liked him like as a person. Yeah. You're following Ryan Reynolds' like, steps. Like, what? 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 He was Green Lantern. I keep giving people uh, characters okay. without powers. That was his first one. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, no, really yeah. yeah. People lowest yeah. lane quality, yeah. Catherine. Definitely. Mm -hmm. A lowest lane quality. I'm staying in the Superman universe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a lowest lane. <laughs> Penguin. <laughs> I love it's a modern coming of age story, but the John Hughes uh, vibe was so there, and I really love that because for us who grew up in the 80s. Um, but for the young actors, do you are you familiar with the John Hughes movie? Did you hear it? Did you see it in, in the story? Because it was so it's such a sweet. The John Hughes movies were so sweet natured, mm -hmm. but they took on some dark topics, and this was exactly like a John Hughes. Hopefully, that's a compliment. <laughs> so for the young kids, were you familiar with the music and the topics and the coming of age stories from the 80s? Yeah, uh, I think that speaks to John's power as a filmmaker too, is the fact that we, I, I grew up watching them, and Greg grew up watching them, and I'm sure that the next generation will grow up watching them, and I yeah. think that this falls into that vein really well. Uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off was like a, a big one for me, that was great, <laughs> watched all the time. Um, and so yeah, I, I think that's a great compliment, I hope that this movie is able to um, connect with young people in a way that you know maybe we haven't seen in, in the the recent years. In the back. One answer. Uh, I had a question for Greg. It's obviously going to be huge for high school kids now who are gay or questioning, but what would it have meant for you to have a movie like this when you were in high school? You know, um, I think about it a lot. I, I, one thing I, I'd say that I didn't realize until after we made the film, and, and it was that I probably would have been too scared to go to the movie. Um, I, I would have worried that people would have thought I was gay if they saw me there, or would I have gone to a neighboring theater. I think that there's probably going to still be kids today that are like, you know, don't want to tell their parent they're going, or afraid if they go with their parents, is it going to incite a conversation, you know? So I think that that's all still a conversation that's happening. But ultimately I would have seen it, and it would have helped me the way that many of the films that I started to see, you know, in college and stuff helped me, that, you know, that they were a window into my potential future if I had the, you know, once I had the sort of wherewithal and courage to, to talk about it. Any other questions? Yes. I mean, I think it's uh, from a gay man of a certain age. You know, <laughs> it really is. I tell you, um, I was I grew up in northern Wisconsin, in the middle of nowhere, 250 people in my hometown. One book changed my life, and um, 
I'm going to try not to cry about this. <laughs> it's so significant to me. What was the book? It was called The Best Little Best Boy, little boy, in, the boy in the World. Yeah, I read the same book. Comes the and it was completely by accident. Um, and <clears throat> it's so significant that this is a story about a first love. It's, it's really the first of its kind, I think, that I know of. Um, did you go into it with that, knowing that, or...? Um, I, w I was a, I just, I, I love the script in general, but I was aware that there hadn't been a, a studio-made film with a, a team gay protagonist like that. And I became, as we were working on it more, and I said that to them in my first meeting when I was applying for the job, I said, you know, you know that there hasn't been something like this. And they, Fox uh, 2000 and Fox were both very committed to making this movie without anyone attached. That moment they said, we're making this film. It, it enabled me to go out there and get great cast and get great crew because it wasn't a question mark of like, are they going to make it with the right elements? Like they were making this story. They knew it was a story that they uh, wanted to be told. But then something different started to happen when I was actually watching it up on its feet with the actors there. And not even necessarily on the day when we were shooting it, but I would go in on the weekends and watch cut footage to see if there was improvements I should make. And, and I started just crying watching certain scenes that weren't even the biggest emotional scenes. Uh, it was a real visceral kind of like a void that I didn't even know that needed to be filled was getting filled. And I wasn't sure if it was just me, maybe I was like too close to it because I'm so generally hypercritic critical and sick to my stomach after I see early stuff because you think, oh, I can't, I don't know, how am I going to fix that thing? And I was having the opposite reaction, and I, and um, so I brought my now husband, but then fiancé in, and he started watching with me, and he started bawling, and uh, and just off like regular family scenes, and, and I, it was just the simple power of representation, you know, just, just, uh, it wasn't, uh, you know, and, and that, that's, it's a power in and of itself that, you know, that I, I wasn't even totally aware of, you know, and, and, and I obviously work in the business and do my part to try and make sure there's LGBT rep on our shows, and, but I still, I still, even at my age, with my uh, experience with all the stuff, I, I still needed that. We have time for one more question. Yes. Okay. Um, I, I'm sure it has screened a lot, it has screened a few times, right? What, what, what are some of the reactions you've been getting from people who have seen this movie? Um, I think that uh, the reaction has been overwhelmingly positive, like Greg said, and, and it, it also is um, sort of, it's, it, it, it's a cross-sectional enthusiasm, which is really cool. It's, we've been to a lot of different parts of the country, we've been to the South, we've been to the Northwest, we've been in New York, and um, pretty much everywhere we've gone this movie has been greeted with enthusiasm and excitement. Um, all of our screenings have actually been overbooked. There have been people that are so excited that they will show it on a second screen. Um, and like Greg said, they're cheering. I mean, they're laughing and they're crying. And so I think it's, um, it just speaks to, you know, the power of all these performances and the power of uh, Greg as a, as a filmmaker and a storyteller. And uh, I, uh, you know, I, I can't wait for it to be, um, you know, to get to the next stage, see if there's, just as much enthusiasm as it seems like there is. Unless we've like just covered, all the fans have seen it now. <laughs> 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 well, you know, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Cool. yeah. We'll come back. They'll bring friends as we keep telling them. We're like, bring a friend. You know, there are people who are like, I've seen this three times. And I'm like, I haven't even seen it three times. What do you mean? <laughs> it was like, that's great. But usually, the majority of the, of the kids are just grateful. They're just thankful, you know. I, I mean, we're thankful to have a movie out like this, but it's really nice that um, that the kids are, are just thankful for it, whether they identify as LGBTQ or not. You know, they everyone knows someone who's going through something very similar. And uh, not only are we creating allies, but we're also instilling a confidence in people to be their best and truest selves, regardless of who they want to make out with. <laughs> Kanan, have you gotten any awesome reactions? Yeah, I mean, I've seen, I've even uh, read things on Twitter about um, some guys like coming out from after seeing the pre-screenings and like, and also doing it in a way that is just like the poster or like, you know, and so I think it's, um, I think it's a testament to like mixing like the performances and um, Craig's told this story in such a beautiful way. It feels real. Nick, your performance is so beautiful. It feels like when I was watching it, I was like, I felt like, you feel like you're you, you know what I mean? I felt like I was you. Right. And so I think for a lot of people, they're feeling 
represented. Um, and and for kids especially, like you can watch a movie which feels so magical and so like larger than life, and you feel like that could be you. Like that's there's no greater feeling than that. And and this provides that for. Them.